okay, find the indefinite integral of trig functions. So if you don't mind, I think I'm going to break it out this way. Plank, hold on. Break it out like this, indefinite integral of t dz minus the indefinite integral of sine of t dt, that's violin. Now what? Yeah, we can just integrate, right? Good, 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 good. Yeah, so integrate. So start to integrate. Same thing. Rewrite, integrate. So we rewrote. Here's our, we're going to start to integrate. This is going to be, isn't it t cubed over 3, right? And then this, this is minus. But when we take the antiderivative of this, what do we get? Negative cosine t, don't we? See where that came from? So <clears throat> this negative and this negative go to positive, don't they? M plus what? Plus C. Is that all right? If you wanted to, you could go back and take the derivative here. It would be 3 times 1 third would be 1, isn't it? This would be decremented by 1, so this would be back to T squared, wouldn't it? The first derivative of cosine of T is... Is it sine or opposite sine? What is it? Okay. Yep. Now you're making me wonder. It's what? True. The first derivative of cosine t is opposite sine t, isn't it? Well, now we're differentiating backwards. Now we're going to go from from here. We're going to differentiate this, right? So the first derivative, look on page 250 on the left-hand side. It says <clears throat> the first derivative of cosine of x is equal to what? Opposite sine, isn't it? And that's where that negative sine would come back. I mean, that's okay. That's why we're talking about this. So we go back, and um, the thing that you're talking about right now is great because now you know how to check by differentiation whether you did it right or not, don't you? Because when we, if we take this and we differentiate, we should get back to the integral, shouldn't we? To the indefinite integral. Okay. Right. Let's go on to another one. I like this one. This one's pretty. Let's see this one. And we have you know, 1 minus cosecant t cotan t dt, right? So how are we going to break this thing up, Dylan? Let's just take the antiderivative of that, right? The an antiderivative of 1 otherwise known as dt, all right? Minus what? Antiderivative of cosecant t, cotan t, dt, right? <clears throat> One way to look at this still is look at this like this, t to the zero power. And then, it, then when you put everything back together, right, it's n plus 1, so it's 0 plus 1 is 1, so we have, right, t to the 1 over, you see what I'm saying? And now if you think about this, you think about taking the derivative of this, deriv the derivative of this would just be 1, see what I'm saying? Okay, so what's, what do we get for this? We get opposite co, sorry, you're right. Well, cosecant, good. Cosecant t, right? Again, we go back to the po negative. Negative is a positive, so this goes to positive, doesn't it? Plus c. Isn't that right? So there's our function. Go back and take its derivative. The first derivative of this is 1, isn't it? What's the first derivative of this? First derivative of cosecant x. Cosecant x, opposite co, right? Opposite cosecant, right? Opposite cosecant t, cotan t, isn't it? So if we differentiate, we get right back to the antiderivative, don't we? 
All right, good work. Good, good, good work. Good, good, good work. This takes a lot of, of, a lot of patience and perseverance, but you guys are doing great at it, so just keep moving a little bit. Let's look at this one. This one looks pretty terrible, but we talked about this before. The antiderivative of theta squared plus secant squared theta, right? d theta. <clears throat> so we have the same variable here, here, and here. Everything is cool, isn't it? I think of this, I probably would have replaced all this stuff with x for myself to make it more clear for myself, but this is going to work out good, isn't it? Going to do a rewrite, aren't we? What's it going to, what's it going to look like? The antiderivative of theta squared plus antiderivative of, oh, right, secant squared theta d theta, right? And now integrate. So now we're going to integrate this, aren't we? And when we integrate this, what happens? This is going to turn out to be what? Yeah, one third theta cubed, right? Or if you wanted to, I uh, we had talked Dylan before. You could end up with theta, theta cubed over three. It's the same thing. Here we just partition it out a little bit, didn't we? Plus this, and what does this turn out to be? Exactly. Is it tan squared theta or just tan theta? Just tan theta, right? Plus c. Right, so here's our function. Here's our parent function. Go back and prove this through differentiation. We'd have three times one third is one. This would be reduced by one, so we'd have theta squared, wouldn't we? What's the first derivative of tan of theta? Secant squared theta, and it's right there, isn't it? And here's this c, this constant value, and of course the the derivative of a constant is is zero. All right.